Okay, once again, we're back in the LBL. Had some recent dogman activity, allegedly. We're here to check it out, and this time we've teamed up with Martin Groves, Dewey Edwards, and our good friends from Hellbent Holler, Joe and Jesse, there they are, doing an equipment check. So, we're ready. Come out, Mr. Bad. I know you're in there. <laughs> They'd love to get up out of that. That's an old TBA trash can right there. It is the old TBA baby, isn't it? Yeah. TBA baby property of TBA babies. They are good. Stuff. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It's cool to say something without. They're disgusting people, man. <laughs> they steal and take and run people out of their homes. Heading up to station 16. Wouldn't you know it, all the bones are gone again. So Joe and Jesse were here a couple days ago and there were bones here. Which I was going to use for something, but spoiled again it looks like. Down there are gone. We uh, we, there was a trail of them leading all the way up here. And how many of us we got? Six feet. I mean, seven people. And we can't seem to find a bunch of bones that were everywhere. Crazy. A day and a half ago. It's just crazy. Yeah. Vertebrae. I'm keeping it with me too because I don't want to risk losing this if we're gonna try that experiment. Real big beamers and all that that we found down there. Nobody's seen them. This is uh, up at the station 16. Yeah. All around. I think it's a whale or a tunnel. No. Pump. Yeah, that's what I was. Gotta get these two bones picked up right here. No bones at all. No bones down in there? A sledgehammer? Yeah. I got a camera I'm going to send down if I can. Shoot, I don't know if you need a camera. You got a bark. Should have tied a rope around his waist, right? He does. He goes, boy. He don't. Here, buddy. It's just a small little room, actually. Here. That light just got my Take this and. I'm sorry, baby. You got to I'm sorry. I know I got my flashlight on for you, honey. There's really nothing down here at all. Does it just stop? Yeah, it's a maybe a nine by nine room. Okay. Pretty good size room. 
right for, to be nothing down here. Okay. I'm down in a hole. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be much down here though. This is the tunnel below station 16 and Joe and Jesse found last summer. Not much here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at this creek. Right down here in the LBL. Looks like a good one. Well, here I am. I find myself completely alone out here. I'm looking for Joe. He ran off on a mission. I don't really know what kind of mission it was. Maybe to find a campsite. So I'm just going to keep walking until I find him. You see it's pretty, pretty hairy out here. It's the site of a, a lot of dogman activity. So hopefully we can get some tonight. All right. We got back together. Talk about dedicated. Look at all these dedicated big cryptozoologists here. It's pissing and pouring. But still. On we go. Okay, we're here at the campsite where Martin and his buddy had the encounter back in 1992. As you can see, it's getting pretty dark. Hi, hi there, honey. Hi, baby. Haven't had anything happen yet. It's really just kind of crazy quiet right now. No owls, no crickets, no frogs. Let's head to see what happens. There's Dewey Edwards. The Dooster. The Dooster. Making his way out of the forest. 
And Joe and Jess are Jesse, way back down this Jesse road. Jesse and Joe are coming right up the yeah, road over there. I see the flashlight coming this way. Shining light over in these woods, baby. We can't see anything. Look up. Been trapped back in the 1930s and 40s. Mm -hmm. And then obviously wolves pretty much got turned extinct in most states. Right. They got frowned upon. So he stopped trapping. He makes this wolf lore. Well, then when wolves got reintroduced into these rural areas, of course, they start going out to people's cattle again, their livestock and their pets. Mm -hmm. So now wolf trapping is allowed again. But did you retape it, baby? You this one right here. Right. Did you hear that over there, honey? Mm-hmm. What'd y'all hear? Alright. Right. Actually, I'm gonna go a little heavier on it. Alright guys, I'm out here at Colson Hollow Road. I've been gathering firewood for like an hour. Look how pretty this place is. It's a little windy. Uh, this is close to the spot that uh, Mr. Colson and his family saw the dog man in 1948. Beautiful spot. It doesn't look like anyone's been here for a long, long time. Let's go over here. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. Gathering firework woods hard work. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the car up there, it's way up there. Pretty good ways away. I saw this over here. We just had to check it out. All this moss. Thinking maybe there might be a cave or something over here. I'll let you guys check it out. beautiful we're up on top of a, a large hill see this is where all the firewood's at too just look at this place Would be a nice place to pitch a tent because this moss is really really soft and this is where we're at so i'm here with martin groves and daryl denton uh I looked there's some little cactus right there so i'm thinking maybe uh Being over home site, I don't know. I don't know if that cactus grows wild in Kentucky. I've never seen that before. Okay, I just want to give you guys a quick look around. It's 
still got a lot of firewood that I gotta get back to camp. And I'm sure Martin and Daryl is upset with me right now for going off alone like this. I don't have my knife, I don't have a lightning or nightmare or even a walking stick. I don't file like that. That piece in between the four. They place that. That's a marker going, going down in there. Right down in here for sure. Sure. Trying to see a big X because I hope it is an X because that's a Jano. That's the ones I like. And they are very pretty. Wow, they broke the tree to make that yeah, formation there. Yeah. Good air. That's a real nice air. Almost as good as that one I showed you a picture of. That's a nice one right there. Lady against that tree made an ass. That's a young dude. Oh man, I'd love to see these guys because they're the friendly ones. They're the ones I had at the river. They're the ones at what? They're the ones I had at the river. Oh, okay. They're all in there. This is definitely a place we need to come back and spend a little time in at nighttime. That's a really nice area. What's that down there? Is that a creek? Looks like a, a bottom or, right down in there. Like or is that a big creek. fallen tree? I don't know. Okay. What's a deep hollow down in there. Look at that. Yeah. Man, that's an awesome area. All right, Daryl and I just climbed up to the top of this hill. It's a pretty substantial hill. There's our vehicles down there. This ridge runs a long way. I need to get back in shape for sure.
Measure to the top. Yeah. Walk down here a little bit and we'll turn by. Alright. Like, Let's do it. What is that? I don't know what that is. What is it? Is it a lens flare or something? I don't know. It's lens flare, honey. You sure? Yeah. I don't know. That looks weird. <laughs> Once again, down to the kill site. With bad. a bunch of yeah, our please. friends. Beautiful night, just to be cold. Yes, honey. All right, we're down at the cemetery by the kill site. Seven or eight of us. Just walk down to the bunkers in there. Doing their thing up in the graveyard. That's you, Matt. Okay, yeah, that's your life. <laughs> okay. Place is still just as eerie and mysterious as it was 20 years ago. It hasn't changed at all. My mom is standing on this side. I have never seen a skunk come that close to people. Get on out of here, Peppy. Pepe Le Pew. And I thought for sure it was my 14 year old daughter. So I didn't think anything about it. Yeah. But when, and it was a warm hand, it wasn't cold, it was warm. Wow. And I turned, and when I didn't see anybody, I was Oh my goodness. My he went under my car. Under your car. <laughs> wow. Watch out, Chrissy. He's probably getting ready to come out from underneath my car. Well, I can't smell myself. It's you all that I have to smell all weekend. He's over by your car now. <laughs> He's under your car. Well, shit, I gotta get my bedding out. Who's just trying to go home? I think he's trying to go. There he goes, right there. Right beside you. Go, go, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times, good memories. I know, what's up with that? He came all the way up to the, almost up to the. <laughs> Not that car. Go.
Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, good to see you here. If you're a new subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you as well. Please make sure that you're still subscribed. Uh, a lot of underhanded stuff's going on around this platform, but no sense in griping and complaining about it. Uh, I'm here to stay, and I'm also looking into other options for uh, other platforms to upload videos on. So uh, if this one doesn't work out, I'll just go to another one. I'm here to tell you the truth, and that's what I'm, I intend to do regardless of uh, the consequences. So a couple months ago, my good friend Mark Maycheck uh, asked me if I had read a post by some uh, big name uh, Bigfoot researcher uh, about the LBL, the land between the lakes. And I told him, I said, no, Mark, I, I haven't read it. I don't really follow anyone, you know. I know what, I know what these things are. I don't really need to uh, listen to that many other people's opinions but not to not to say that I don't respect a lot of these researchers out there there's some that are really good uh, others not not so much they've been in, in doing this for 30 or 40 years and haven't taken one single step forward when it comes to finding out any knowledge or any answers concerning the humanoids uh, and with this video we're going to return to the land between the lakes I know you guys really like that topic uh, it's the hottest topic in the crypto world right now, once again. And as I mentioned in the last video, my wife and I have been down there for the last three weekends. My hands are all scarred up with running through the uh, briars and the brambles, trying to dig up some evidence without using shovels. Uh, and like I say, the LBL is really... Since the, the video that I posted with my scientist friend, uh, the LBL has really blown up again. And the, the uh, experiences of Martin Groves really ignited this subject once again. And I, ha I have to say that I was able to meet with the scientist down in the land between the lakes and, and we walked a creek with him. And he is one of the finest upstanding uh, gentlemen that I've ever met in my life. He is uh, everything that he claims to be and I'm a hundred percent sure that he's not lying about anything. He has no reason to lie. He's professional. He's a Christian. He knows that lying in this life has repercussions in the next one. So uh, I, I tend to take the words of Christians a little bit more seriously at first than I do non-Christians. It's just not to say that uh, all non-Christians are liars because that's not the case at all. Some of them are really fine, upstanding people and uh, have a lot of friends that don't believe in God. But uh, when I interview a Christian, it, it, it sheds a little bit of uh, confidence on the story, which is, you know, I have, there are Christians who lie and lie about things and still I have to vet things, but even the Christians have to be vetted. But... Uh, all in all, it's, it's, it's a little bit different talking to Christians than, than say, atheists. But my, my friend Mark asked me if I'd seen this guy's uh, post, and I told him no, and I'd go look at it, and I did. And uh, what he said was, was pretty amazing to me. Uh, he said he'd been going down to Land Between the Lakes for years now, and he's never seen uh, one bit of evidence that there's a dog man or dogmen uh, in the LBL and that it was all baloney uh, everyone should feel safe to come down there bring their kids don't worry about dogmen um, there were Bigfoot in the area he said but not dogmen so he he never encountered a dogman or any evidence for that and he concludes that there are no such thing there so it's really an arrogant comment and this guy has four or five thousand followers. I hope 
each of them took that post with a grain of salt. Uh, it's uh, the logical fallacy, of course, what he's, what he's using there. It's called argument from incredulity, which basically boils down to, I don't believe what you said, so it's not true. Which is totally ridiculous. It's like me uh, saying that I, I lived in Florida for seven months and I must have swam in that ocean a hundred times and no shark ever attacked me in that ocean so I don't believe there are any sharks in that ocean or that anyone's ever been attacked in that ocean. Uh, do you see how arrogant and kind of a reckless a statement like that would be, you know, bring all your kids and come down and swim in this ocean, there are no sharks there. Same thing he said for about the LBL, so I hope I hope everyone took that with a little grain of salt, and I want to read you a couple of emails here about lots of emails uh, concerning the LBL and the truth of the matter, and not someone's opinion. So this first one comes from a good friend of mine who's also a, a researcher named Tim Bernard. Tim, I want to thank you for sending this in and sharing this with me so I can share it with all of you. So it's entitled, I witnessed the account of Dog Man encountering the LBL 2012. Tim writes, on the Sunday after the Paris, Tennessee conference last year, uh, Dogman Conference, Paris, Tennessee, it was a huge success. Hopefully you guys will come to the next one. If you want to know what a good conference uh, experience feels like, then it's something that you'll never, you'll never find somewhere else. So on the Sunday after the Paris, Tennessee conference, we decided to go check out the LBL as we were so close. We drove, drove straight east to the lower end of the LBL on Highway 79 and went up to the South Welcome Station on the byway. About a third of the way up through the LBL, we stopped at the home place, 1850's farm. Decided to not do a tour of the farm because it was hot out. Besides, I grew up on a small farm, so not many surprises there for me. We were looking at the exhibits when I overheard the woman working behind the desk say to her co-worker, Wolf, not Bigfoot. My ears perked up and I started actively listening. I didn't catch his response to her, but she then said, no, upright wolf, not a Bigfoot. He then jokingly said, a werewolf. I wandered over to the desk and said hi to this very pleasant woman named Janet. I mentioned I had overheard her and he had, and had just been to the conference in Paris, Tennessee. She perked right up and mentioned, and mentioned she had already talked to a person from the conference that morning, didn't remember his name, and had told him the whole story, which I've yet to hear from anyone else, so whoever it was Janet gave her story to, you need to come out and let's hear it, and maybe compare it to this one here. I encouraged her to continue, and she told me of her encounter. The interesting thing is, that this was a dogman encounter, yet had taken place in the extreme southern part of the park. Here's Janet's encounter. This happened in 2012, as far as she could remember, sometime in the summer. Her sister had been with her and had passed away in 2013, so she was fairly sure on the date. Janet had gone camping with her daughter, Janet's sister, and her sister's son, Janet's nephew. They camped in the LBL frequently at that time, and usually camp lightly with often not even a tent. And that's very brave. Janet was driving a pickup truck. She and her sister in the front, kids in the back seat. They were going to either the Piney Campground or the Boswell Landing Campground. She just couldn't remember which one. They were on the road heading to the campground when they saw what they thought was a trash bag in the road. I neglected to ask if it was a full trash bag how big it was, exactly where on the road, etc. Then they stopped. I believe she said to pick it up. Her recounting became a bit confused at this point, but she remembered this upright wolf creature jumping into the bed of the truck and that it really made the truck slam down as though it was really heavy. She said she saw it out of the corner of her eye, but she wasn't sure if it jumped out of a tree, jumped off the hillside by the road, or had just sprung into the air, but she recollected that she thought she had seen it 
seeing it come down from like 12 feet in the air. Her daughter was screaming, her sister was screaming, and her nephew was also hollering. The kids and her sister said the creature was tearing away at the food, etc., that they had in the back of the pickup, digging at it and ripping it open. She said that at the time, the kids really emphasized this a lot, the digging through the stuff in the back of the truck. She stated she looked in the rearview mirror and that it hunched over and glared at her eyes in the mirror, locking eyes with her. She stated she felt that it was doing this purposefully to make her even more afraid. At this point, she digressed to mention that for the last 10 years, she had been trying to convince herself that this was a man in a Halloween costume that did this all just to be able to scare people for fun. I did not give her my opinion on this idea or try to dissuade her as this was the most emotional part of the discussion as she really seemed to need to believe it was a human being. She felt the trash bag had been purposely placed there to attract and stop them. Several times during the talk, she mentioned that she was so happy to talk to people who didn't make fun of her and think she was crazy for recounting this experience. She mentioned several other items of interest that the previous conference attendee, attendee had given her the link to PRT, Paranormal Roundtable with Josh Turner. Given her the link to PRT YouTube channel and Jenna had written it in the research notebook she keeps at work. She had watched the show where Josh interviewed Roger, must have been just that morning, and she said that Roger's description of the beast pretty much exactly matched hers. And his description of the beast was exactly the same as the eyewitness sketch I did for Jan Thompson 15 years ago, the late Jan Thompson. That's interesting. Um, pretty much exactly I pretty I mentioned there was some question about the exactness or authenticity of Rogers account but this is the point she was most insistent on was that what she saw was exactly the same as what Roger describes she stated that today her daughter remembers nothing of the event whatsoever and they have never discussed it her nephew remembers the occurrence quite well completely and they discuss it often every time they see each other including just the previous week. The previous conference attendee got the nephew's contact info and name to follow up with Janet's permission, but I didn't as we were so as we were not going to have time to do so. So Janet, if you're watching this video, uh, please contact me and I'd be happy to talk with you uh, and your nephew. She also confirmed that a friend of hers that also works in the park had disclosed to her that there was an actual campground where the massacre occurred and that it had been subsequently closed by the park service. She was not aware of its exact location. Additional occurrence in the 1970s. She then mentioned that she had a previous experience many years earlier in the 1970s, long before Janet Thompson's story came out, when she was a child and was camping in the LBO with her parents, she had not mentioned this occurrence to the previous conference attendee. This is her previous encounter. The interesting aspect of this one is that it took place in the far northern part of the park and seemed to have possibly been a Bigfoot encounter in my opinion. There are less details and she was younger and it happened so long ago. Her family had gone camping in the northeast of the park, most likely near Pisgah, Pisgah Bay camping area. She said the area was quite distinct in that there were large rocks, small boulders lining the camping parking area so as to keep vehicles from going over a steep drop down to the lake. She indicated the rocks were approximately two feet across, much too large for a human to move. Her father had moved the camper forward until it was stopped against the rocks, using them to help block and stabilize the camper. My impression was that it was a motorhome type camper, not a truck and trailer, due to the next bit of information. In the middle of the night, she woke to her parents hollering and her dad jumping behind the wheel and stomping on the brake, and her mom pulling up on the emergency brake to stop the camper from rolling forward. Her dad got out and checked, and the rocks had been moved away from the edge from in front of the wheels, allowing the camper to start to roll forward. She remembered her parents also discussing how the vehicle had been taken out of park and made to move forward, but had no further details. 
If you have any questions or would like to inquire about any details or fine points that I may not have included, please feel free to contact me by email, cell, or text, which I did. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I really appreciate you sending this in and sharing this with all of us. Uh, I know we've heard people say that uh, the dog men are in the northern part of the park and the, the Bigfoot are down at the southern end, but that's totally ridiculous. Uh, these things, these things know no borders. And there's no reason why one wouldn't come into the uh, certain section of the park and the other wouldn't. In fact, we have Martin Grove's testimony to the contrary that the Bigfoot and the dogmen there are working together. So make of that what you will. And it's uh, a lot of information on something that is not supposed to exist there according to some researchers quote unquote don't exist. Okay, here's another one. Just get this one in. From Nadine Bush Smith. Sorry it's taking so long for me to write you, Barton. It's been a busy weekend trying to move our oldest son out. We moved to Hopkinsville in April 1991. I remember it because we had a bad stretch of luck. We had a tornado go through our trailer park a few weeks before we moved. John had already been down in Kentucky a month when the rest of the family had finally moved down. It had been warm that year. We moved down and lived in what is now called Ashwood Village Homes. We lived on the main street at the end of the road in the right. At first it seemed like a great idea because it made for a very large play area where all the kids on the end of the street could play together. But the woods always seemed cold and unwelcome. I disliked being near the tree line altogether. And the dog never liked that, never liked the woods. She was always barking at them. Her hair would stand on edge and she would get close, but never more than a few feet. We would hear stories of a beast or half-breed of some kind on Antioch Road. Some said it was a family who inbred, but you ignore stuff like that. It's just talk, and you never knew if it was true. Every town seems to have urban legends, right? Right, Nadine? We spent the summer relatively unaware of anything other than the odd feeling from the tree line. Late summer, we had to bury a dog that had been neglected. It died and it didn't feel right to not bury the dog, so we dug a hole near the tree line. I remember feeling I was, I remember feeling I was because my watch from the woods, okay? Not quite sure what she was saying there. A neighbor warned us not to bury the dog there because it was sacred land. My husband had been in the woods going caving with friends and he had said he had seen drawings but didn't think much of them. They never got past a certain area in the cave due to bats, so they never knew if there was anything more there, but a few times they came back and would comment that it was odd. So we didn't take a lot of stock in the sacred ground theory. Again, we didn't know who to believe because there were a lot of people who seemed really superstitious. The day after we buried the dog, it disappeared, and the dirt we had covered, with, covered it with was gone, too. After that, things got really weird. We noted a cold spot in the area where we had buried the dog. It was late summer, and it was hot, but that spot was always cold. My neighbor miscarried. After she moved out, I would see red eyes staring at me from within the vacant mobile home. The neighbors across the street had a little girl who would refuse to speak. They said she saw something in her window, and she just stopped talking. That's, that's terribly sad. Soon after, they moved out, too. A new family moved in, military family. They were there until housing was ready on post. They, too, were not there long. They just left as quickly as they came. Other trailers started emptying out at the end of the line on the opposite side of the road. By Halloween, there weren't a lot of people left near the tree line and we started seeing red eyes watching us from the tree line. At first, my husband said it was a kid with a mask. I think he thought we were crazy. Soon, cat skulls were being placed under our tree with the ears and scalp area still attached. I stopped going at night. I stopped going in at night, and I stopped letting my son play in the field. 
He was five at the time. He started having trouble sleeping. One night, he awoke screaming. When I went back to his room, he was pointing at the window. There I saw blood red glowing, there I saw blood red glowing eyes and black and brown hair. It growled. I picked up my son and took him to the living room. The next day I told a friend about it and she didn't seem surprised. She actually sounded like she believed me. She encouraged me to go to the library and we went together with another friend. We read about skinwalkers and shamans and what happens to a skinwalker when they are killed in the form of the animal. And when we were done, I was really just ready to move. It was then I told my husband again. Still, he didn't believe me. I think he thought I was crazy. My husband was never home, and half the time my cars didn't work. It wasn't long after the school called. Shane was drawing pictures at school of a large, hairy, wolf-like creature with red eyes and long fangs. The dog no longer wanted to go out and always felt like we were being watched. The neighbors across the street were military and often not home. They were home one night. We remember hearing screaming and then police cars showing up. The next day was a weekend. Weekend. We went outside and everyone was hanging out around their trailer. We went over to see if everyone was okay. There were large cuts in the side of the trailer that looked like they had been made by a very large paw with very sharp claws. It cut through the metal and ran down most of the side with the, of the trailer, starting at the glass sliding doors at the kitchen area. It literally looked like Freddy Krueger just walked down the side of the, that trailer and sliced right into it. They moved out. After that, we would hear growling outside the trailer. Other people were now seeing the creature. It was seven feet at least, dark brown and black with a snout like a wolf, long fangs, blood red eyes, long arms that hung a little lower than a human, and it walked differently on two very large paw-like feet, but it was different than the way a man walked. It loped like an animal, sort of. We got a few more cat skulls under the tree, and then one day I was home with my kids and a friend. Our husbands were in the field. We were watching television or a video. I don't remember which one, to be honest. We heard growling. My friend went to the kitchen window and it was standing outside watching her. Then it began shaking the trailer. It was terrifying. The door popped open and we thought it was going to come in, but it didn't. We walked to the door to reach for the knob so we could close the door. When we looked out, it was just gone. There were no prints anywhere. I swear the police we called thought we were on drugs or should have been. They tried to convince us that it was a kid in a mask. It wasn't. I know it was a wolf. It had to be seven feet at least, and it was broad in the shoulders. The closest picture I have ever found of it, I will attach. We moved shortly after that. I remember the night we left, it was getting dark, and we just left whatever was in the trailer. We never wanted to go back, and we never have. So when I talked to her, and after, if she saw the dogman thing again at LBL, and she said, yes, around 1992, took a pontoon out on the lake at LBL. It looked about the same as the first one I saw. It looked about the same. I've often wondered if it wasn't the same one or if there are more than one. We also saw a dead one on the side of the road in Louisiana. It was on the way to Alexandria. It was late at night. I have no doubt it was, it was real. We also saw some very unexplained stuff in Pennsylvania when we lived there. Lots of blue lights in the sky, and pretty much all our lives we have had weirdness. I can't seem to outrun all the strangeness. Thank you for believing me. I can't tell you how stupid the police tried to make us sound, but I think they knew about it. We still have occasional issues when we investigate. We encountered a very similar creature to the one in Kentucky. It was not a flesh and blood creature only, though. It was not a flesh and blood creature only, though. That probably sounds crazy. It was pretty intense. We were run out of the location earlier, but it was generally paranormal. Six of us saw it. By the way, I really enjoy your inhumanoid stories on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for those. You're welcome, Nadine. Thank you for sending this in. It was a very um, unsettling email. Uh, what your family went through and your, and your neighbors went through, it's... Um, 
definitely not a good thing. And for all those who don't believe that Dogman is present in the LBL, I invite you to listen to that story closely. And uh, take from it what you will. Uh, this lady is a very nice lady. She's not a liar. She's very sincere. And I believe her 100%. So what you believe is up to you. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. And there it is. Okay, guys, and this is the sketch that Nadine sent me that she did herself. See if you can see that. It's quite a scary thing to see. So, Nadine, thank you so much for sending in that email for me to share with everyone. And if you have any other encounters that you'd like to share, we're always open uh, to hearing them there, hearing them here. As long as they're true, as you know, we don't do any creepy pasta here. I don't hire anyone to write fictional stories so I can read them as true. Uh, what you get here is simply the truth. Nothing more. Uh, and if you appreciate that kind of content, please uh, be sure to subscribe and like the video and maybe leave a comment down in the comment section. So. You guys have a great day until the next time. Uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you around somewhere up a creek.